book of Colossians we're doing, and what happens is Paul is one of the authors. He's writing with Timothy. And, and for some of you who don't understand this, the Apostle Paul was not a well man. He was sick, physically sick. The Bible talks about he had a thorn in his flesh. And what happened is he was sick, and many times he said, I write this in my own hand to show that he was doing it. He, he, he was very weak. There are speculations of what sickness he had. I'm not going to go into it, but the fact is he couldn't do a lot of stuff. Yet the Bible also teaches me that when he was weak, he was strong in Christ. And he did not let his sickness stand in the way. And for, for this reason, he, he was phenomenal at promoting the gospel of Jesus Christ, even though he was suffering. He also was a servant. And, and here's the craziest thing. When the Bible says, take up your cross and follow me, we, sometimes we put excuses. Oh, I can't do that. I'm sick. Or I can't do that. I'm shy. Or I can't do that. I'm an introvert. Or I can't do that um, because of this or that. The point is this. He, Paul, he didn't have excuses. He, Paul, um, he was an example of the gospel of Jesus Christ to all these people. And for that reason, although Colossae didn't know him, uh, they had heard about him, and they had heard about how great an example he was, they were willing to take what he said. So when Paul is writing this passage of Scripture that we're going to study today, they're sitting there on the edge of their seat saying, please help me get closer to Christ. Paul never tried to get people closer to him. Paul tried to get people closer to Christ. So if you do the QR code, you go to the scripture, Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. So then, just as you, Colossae, received Jesus Christ as Lord, number one, continue to live your life in him. How? Rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition or the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity, what is that, the fullness, deity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, okay, are in Christ who live bodily in bodily form. And in Christ you have been brought into fullness. He is the head over every power and in every authority. So let's just go back and dissect this, okay, in sections. Pay attention to the first one, okay? See then, just as you were received Jesus Christ as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thanksgiving. Are you ready? Let's go through it. Number one, see to it that you receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Now, I don't want to scare you, but I need to tell you the truth. If Jesus Christ isn't Lord, you don't have eternal hope in heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. Nobody comes to Father God, which is heaven, except through me. There's no door number two. Okay? And, and, and it all boils down to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Now, let, let me just explain to you what the Lordship of Jesus Christ is. The Lordship of Jesus Christ is biblically based. It's what God wants you to be and do here on earth. And it's biblically based. It's not what you think the Lordship is. It's not what I think the Lord, it's what the Bible says the Lordship is. Take up, my, take up your cross and follow me daily. Consider it pure joy when you face trials of any kind because it's testing your faith. You've got to surrender to the Lordship. He is boss. And, and the point is this, that somebody says to me, it's biblical, but the second part is this, it's a repent. It's just not coming to an altar and praying a prayer, oh, dear Jesus, please come in my heart. The Bible says we need to confess with our mouth, but we also need to believe with our heart Jesus Christ and we will be saved. Now, let me share this. When you believe with your heart, the repent means that if God wants you to go this way with the Lordship and you're going this way with the Lordship, you turn around and you go his way. And you don't go both ways. 
So the repenting means you are getting rid of what, this is why we do water baptism. It shows what you're doing is Jesus is Lord, you're getting rid of the old life, boom, down in the water, you're coming up and you're with the new life, the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Here's the craziest thing. Somebody says to me, give me an easy definition of Jesus Christ being Lord. He's in charge of everything. I trust in the Lord with all my heart. I don't lean on my understanding, but in all my ways I acknowledge him and the Lord will direct my path in everything. In everything. This week I was in Walmart. Have you heard of this store called Walmart? Okay, I was in Walmart. I have a section I go to, it's called clearance. It's in the men's section. I go to clearance every time. It should have my name, Billy's Clearance, on it. I saw a shirt there that was $9.98. I could afford it. I had the cash in my wallet. If I don't have the cash in my wallet, I don't spend it. I had the cash in my wallet. And yet I heard a little voice in my heart that said, you don't need that. And I said, Jesus, is that you? And I heard the voice again, you don't need it. And I walked away. I wanted it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And you know, when I got out of the car, I was so thankful I didn't buy that shirt. Because this ugly man walking in to Walmart had it on and it didn't look that good. Here's the crazy thing, are you ready? Paul starts off, says, okay, wanna be a good Christian? Lord. Number two, how? Continue to live, in with, uh, live with him. How? Rooted, rooted. Now this goes back to the parable of Jesus. Remember the parable of Jesus, where Jesus tells the parable, the farmer was sowing seeds, the seed is the word of God, and the first seed falls on the path, and it's trampled, and the birds come and steal the seed? Let, let me just share this with you. In this room right now, there is the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. But there is also the power and presence of principalities of darkness, evil, demonic powers. Demonic powers are in this room and they're going to try to steal this sermon from you. Are you ready? And, and what happens is, he says, you have to be rooted, Paul says. In other words, so the seed is deep so that the devil can't steal it. The other one, it says rooted in such a way that the rocks don't get in the way. You dig the roots down. So during the time of testing and the wind comes or tornado comes, it can't be blown away. But rooted so deep that you're getting nourishment and, and food. How does a tree grow? It, it, it grows because the roots are giving it nourishment and, and, and life. Then Jesus says you need to be the good soil where you retain, persevere, and you produce the word of God, rooted. Well, then he goes on and he says you need to be built up. Now, let me explain to you what this means being built up. Jesus is the architect, Jesus is the contractor, and Jesus is the owner. And I don't mean this to be rude, but I never wanted to be a pastor. Okay, I mean, if you told me I was going to be a pastor as a teenager, I probably would have just freaked out. I mean, I'm really glad I'm a pastor, I, and only because of you. I got a great congregation, I got great people, okay? But I'll be honest with you, this isn't something you jump up and down going, oh, guess what, I'm a pastor. Matter of fact, this week I'm having supper with a funeral director, and he looked at me and says, why are you a pastor? And I looked at him and said, why are you a funeral director? You know what I mean? Give me a break, okay? Here's the reason I'm a pastor, are you ready? Jesus is Lord. How to be built up? He is the architect. He does the design, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path, architect. He is the contractor, he's building me up. Yes, he brings um, uh, many trials into my life in order to help test my faith and so forth, and he is the owner. Here's the truth, lordship, what he says goes. Then he goes on and says, strengthen your faith, and we just talked about that. 
where we, we dig our roots deep so we get the nourishment of God. But then he says thanksgiving, overflowing with thankfulness. Now, can I just tell you something? Don't you ever, ever, ever tell me you have the Lordship of Jesus Christ unless you're overflowing with thankfulness. One of the greatest fruits of the Lordship of Jesus Christ is you cannot stop thanking God. You cannot stop. My mother, she, she didn't even know this, but constantly she was saying, thank you, Jesus. Constantly. I mean, it, it, our family, we just knew that was mom. We, it, it, to people who are visiting, they, they would say, my friends would always say, you know your mother talks to herself. I said, no, she's not. She's talking to God. Uh, he, he, and then one of my friends says, you know, she says the same thing all the time. She says, thank you, Jesus. I said, yeah, well, she's got a lot to be thankful for. I mean, here, here's the craziest thing. When Jesus is Lord, and, and, and somebody says to me, well, you don't know what I'm going through. You know, I can't be thankful. Give me a break. This is a guy, Paul, who is sick. He's been thrown into prison. In prison, he's thanking and praising God. You've never been in prison for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hello. He's sick and in prison. Hello. Okay. I know your story is a real sob story, and let me pull a handkerchief out so we can have a cry, okay? But here's the point. These boys died for the gospel. These boys died for the gospel. And, and they're overflowing with thankfulness. Matter of fact, Peter, the history says that Peter says, hey, when you crucify me, put me upside down and crucify me, because I'm not worthy to be crucified the same way as Jesus Christ. Here, here's the... I mean, these guys, they're living for the Lordship of Jesus Christ. They're not living for their next car, or they're not living for their next pay raise. They're living for Jesus Christ. But then he goes on, and this is where the rubber hits the road. Are you ready? He says in verse 8, see to it that no one takes you captive. And this means human or demonic. Are you ready? See, to no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophies which depend on human tradition and or elemental, uh, elemental spiritual forces, which is demonic, of this world rather than of Christ. So let's deal with first, okay? Let's deal with first the hollow and deceptive philosophy of human traditions. Are you ready? I find it totally ironic how people go, Jesus is Lord of my life. And then they go out, out of church, and they go and buy a lottery ticket. And they kiss that ticket. And they go, come on, baby. Come on, 649, give it to me. Daddy needs some big bucks. Daddy wants to buy a new BMW. Right, and, and that, right? Or here's one for you, okay? You go to a Chinese restaurant, okay? Now, I love to eat fortune cookies, but some of you Christians, seriously, you're hurting the heart of God. You read the fortune, you go, oh yeah, and you rub it, and then you put it in your wallet. Hello. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, 100%, even down to that stinking $1 for the lottery ticket. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. So, some of you who got this human tradition, I feel sorry for black cats. Some of you are just racist. There's a black cat. The best looking cats out there are black, okay? Or how about these little rabbits who've given their foot so you can have a keychain? Poor little rabbit only has three feet because of you now. He's no longer Hop, he's Bob. Here's the craziest thing, human tradition, okay? Are you ready? Let me go a little further. For some of you who think you're holier than thou, Right? Some of you, you have a routine in the morning, and if you don't follow your routine in the morning, you're going to have a bad day. That's witchcraft. 
This whole thing, if I don't wear my lucky shoes, throw them out. Those souls are going to send you to hell. If, if I don't have this or, uh, uh, or, you know. When I start to get in a routine where I think this is my lucky thing, I break it immediately by doing something else in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I have people who, who won't walk under a ladder, people who won't step on a crack when you're walking down a sidewalk. It's like, are you crazy? Step on those stupid cracks. I mean, seriously. And then it goes on and it says spiritual forces. The principalities, the Bible says in Ephesians, darkness, principalities of evil, demonic powers that are trying to get you to do philosophy. Let, let me go boldly where most preachers will not go. Are you ready? God created Adam, man, XY chromosome. God created Eve, XX chromosome. The two of them were married. They had children. They had sex, which you don't know anything about, but you will one day. That's the way the Lord made it. Anybody who goes into any other philosophy is not under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Do you understand? And I don't care what you call yourself with pronouns. I don't care what you call yourself. If you were born with a little doo-doo, you are a boy. You understand? You do not have a doo-doo. You are not a boy. Hello. And you go in and get rid of doo-doo. You did did, <laughs> but you still in God's eye are X, Y. What I'm saying to you is this, don't let hell rob you of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> For in Christ, of course, half of you are going, what's a doo-doo and a did did, okay? <laughs> For in Christ all the fullness of the deity. Do you understand? Everything in God is in Jesus. Everything on the cross that God had was in Jesus. Everything in the resurrection was in Jesus. And in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power, every authority. I'm not scared of hell. I'm not scared of the devil. I'll tell you why. I'm under the lordship of Jesus Christ. My Lord is taking care of me. You understand, my Lord is taking care of me. So there's three applications I give to you. In, in Florida, when I was on holidays, I went to a church called Deep Creek, and the pastor was talking about being hacked, and the first point I give to you is hacked or healthy. A number of years ago, I learned not to open up every text that's sent to me and every email because you'll get hacked. I hear about people who are losing their money out of their bank account because they got hacked. Being hacked is where a virus comes in or, or, or a terrible thing comes in and it robs you of what you want and what you should have. And how many of us are being hacked by spiritual forces or humanistic philosophies? Dumb, and we're losing out on the blessing. Are you hearing? The, the reason I have Jesus as Lord is because I need blessing. Not only, you know, yes, it's great fire insurance, and yes, I get to go to heaven, but let's deal with it now. He didn't come just give me fire insurance and get me to heaven. He came to be life in me now. And so many of us, we've opened up the wrong email or we've opened up the wrong text to the devil or to some philosophy that because we, we have a friend and we don't want to turn them off, so we're going to try to mix our Jesus with them so that we don't turn them off. Oh. 
And when they go to hell, they're going to be yelling up from hell, why didn't you tell me the truth? Why did you tiptoe around the subject? Like an Islamic person said to a Christian one day, if hell is really real, how can you sleep at night? Hacked or healthy. Well, here, here's the craziest thing. I, I don't always know if I'm healthy. I feel healthy. I went to the doctor uh, a couple months ago in January for a physical because I wanted to find out if I'm healthy. Oh my goodness. I think they make money off all the tests because they did every test going. They went from top to bottom. They, they took more blood out of me than there was blood in me. They did, they did EKGs, they did scans, they did scopes, they did, I mean, they did a, a echocardiogram, which I, oh, the grease that they put on me. It was so, oh. And then I walked into the doctor's office after five hours of being there for tests. And the doctor sat down and said, you're good. And he got up, I go, whoa. Five hours and all you're saying is you're good? Yeah. All your tests came back great. And I said, wait, we just did five hours. You're going to give me more than five seconds. He goes, well, what do you want to talk about? Here's the craziest thing. When was the last time you examined to see if you were hacked or you were healthy? How? With the Bible. With a Christian friend. With somebody who's godly, this is why I love small groups, I love Bible studies around here, where you can sit down and you can deal with people and find out if you're hacked or if you're healthy. No, number two, I changed this word simple uh, or smart. The reason is they didn't want me to use the word stupid, so I won't use the word stupid, so I'll use the word, but here's the thing, and I say this in love, a lot of us, including myself, I preach this to myself probably more than you, we're brain dead. We're brain dead. We know we're not healthy in a certain area. We know the devil's hacked us in a certain area, yet we pretend to let on we're not. A smart Christian is a Christian who is going after the Lordship of Jesus Christ all the time. It's not a question of, you, you know, I have the Lordship. Let, let me give you the two, and I've used this as an example, I apologize. But my marriage, my dad taught me something, never be satisfied with your marriage. Once you get satisfied with your marriage, then you start to go backwards. I mean, my wife and I, we're always sending little love notes, and now she, she can't, I, don't, I don't think I can say this. Oh, yes, I can, okay. I, I was traveling the other day, okay, and she writes little love notes, and she hides them, okay? She hid it in my underwear. <laughs> and it was five o'clock in the morning, I had to get up to go to the airport, and so I didn't turn on the lights, right? And I put my underwear on, this underwear, she's got all my clothes out for me because I'm useless. And I get to the airport and I'm going like this, and I can't figure. Right? Right? And everybody thinks I'm an Elvis Presley, inter you know, it's like. I go in the washroom and there's a little love note in there. Ooh, I threw it out. Can I just say that? I, uh, hey! These people in the New Testament, they say, we cast out demons in your name, we heal the sick, and God the Father and Jesus say, sorry, I never knew you. Why? It's not a question you knowing Christ, it's a question of him knowing you. It's a question of him being Lord of your life. And Paul says, if you don't continue to be rooted, drilling them down so you get nutrition and stability. If you don't continue to come against the philosophy of traditions that people are trying to throw on you, even hell, you're in doo-doo. Last one I give to you is fake versus faith. Today's Palm Sunday. Here in a few days from now, it's Easter. 
Jesus comes in to Jerusalem on a colt, and the people are on the streets, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna. And all these people are worshiping Jesus. And then just a few days later, these same people are the ones who yell, crucify him. Crucify him. Some of us, we just go along with what everybody else, if, if, if everybody is eating strawberry ice cream, we eat strawberry ice cream. If everybody's uh, on a, v- a, 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 a vegan diet, we go vegan. I mean, here, here's the craziest thing. God wants us to be able to not go according to what people or demonic realms want us to go. We go according to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Are you fake? Or do you have faith? One of the things, and and the pastors know this, one of the things that bothers me is when, and and I I pray to God this will never happen. I I pray, literally, I pray to God uh, this will not happen. I get to heaven, and I'm in heaven, and I see Pastor Dawson, I go, Dawson, I don't see so-and-so up here. I haven't met them yet. And I go up to St. Peter or whoever's in charge of the books and go, so-and-so, they they were in the Passion Play. They they sang in our worship team. They, they, uh, they, they, wow. They even did a small group. And Peter goes down and goes, I'm sorry, they're not here. What, what do you mean they're not here? They attended church on the Queensway. Oh, you mean the ones who were singing Hosanna in the highest? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They were fake. They were fake. See, what Paul is saying is, here's the key to your Christianity, Colossus Church. Jesus has to be Lord. Be rooted biblically through prayer, through the Holy Spirit. Be established. Let him build you up. He's the contractor. He's the owner. He's the architect. And don't let the human philosophy and traditions and and the demonic philosophy and traditions rob you. Rob you. I end with this, and, and, and I'm not here to hurt people. But once in a while, I'll have somebody sit down with me and say, I, I don't see confession boxes, and I, I don't see statues, and I don't see a lot of stuff that other temples and synagogues and churches have. You guys are kind of like just plain Jane. And I say to them, well, here's the truth. I don't see those things in the Bible. I mean, we got to confess our sin to Jesus. I said, candles are very pretty in the church, but like, hello. I've seen people in churches where there's candles and they're worshiping with the candle instead of with the Christ. And statues, I'll be truthful with you, there's nowhere in the Bible we pray to a saint. We pray to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that's it. And, and, and God forbid 
we rob them of the glory. Yes, I have the highest respect and reverence for Mary, but she is not God. And yes, I, I, I have the highest respect for Peter and Paul and John and I can't wait to meet them all. But having them around my neck isn't gonna give me lucky charms. And having a cross around my neck doesn't mean that I'm gonna have a good day. But I need to get back to Jesus as Lord. Let me end with my illustration, and I'm sorry, I, I, some people are gonna think I really picked on a lot of people today. I'm watching an NBA game the other day, okay? Watching an NBA game. And the guy's coming down and, you know, he takes a shot and goes in and goes, which means, you know, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, right? And then I go to YouTube to hear an interview with this guy and every other word is F this and SH this and And he's got a beer and a cigar, and I'm like, well, what is that? And then, then I hear a rapper. I like rap music. I know I'm too old for it, but I like rap music. I really do. And I hear this rapper, and his words are so filthy, I can't listen to it. I mean, you're sleeping with this who, and this how, and this hip, and this help, and it's like, give me a break your filthy mouth. And then I go over to YouTube and he's giving this testimony of how he's a Christian. It's like, where's your Christianity, man? I mean, you're, well, you know, like my songs, you know, I'm just trying to reach people. Come on, give me a break. The Bible says the way to Christ is narrow. The way to hell is huge. And Paul says, he has to be Lord. He has to be Lord. In everything. Even your mouth. 